Yeah. Namaste to all the participants who have joined us uh, for this afternoon session on Facebook Live. This is the 35th episode. And uh, this episode is being uh, planned at the last moment for uh, teachers uh, at a time when the schools are reopening, the schools are getting ready to reopen. Some schools have started and taken a break and then they are coming back and the kind of environment which has been set, we thought that I think there is a necessity that we should be kind of looking at saying that a, a very, very important topic on uh, to be very, very specifically uh, talking on uh, the topic of uh, are we, are the teachers really getting burnt out during this particular whole process of COVID-19? Few points, pointers before I introduce the panelists. One of the first and the foremost thing is that if you have any question and you want that to be kind of highlighted, if you want something to be put across, feel free to put it in the comment box and we will be more than happy to kind of answer. Second important point, all the panelists are teachers first, then they are playing the other roles. That's the second point. Third, the experiences shared by me or by the participants are not specific to their own institutions, but this is what is being studied across the country and outside the country. During the last one month, uh, when I traveled to different schools, spoke to different profile of people across the country, with the managements, one particular challenge is something which is coming out very, very clearly that there is a challenge among the teachers when it comes to uh, a school, particularly post-COVID. Typically, people think that on a weekend, you just go back, you can go out for a movie, you can take your, dog, your pet out, you can you know, but to go out with the family, spend some time. But when we try to talk about teachers per se as such, I think they just go back, they pick up those bags, they pick up those uh, material for the correction, preparation of those, uh, you know, for the next Monday's class and the lifestyle is quite different. Many people think that teachers' uh, role and the job is very easy for us to look at it because it is, you, you, you just look at only 24 hours in a week, but there is something called as before and after. And we really need to understand as uh, this particular teacher who has actually contributed, who shifted very quickly from a, a regular school to an online school, from an online school to an offline, then to a hybrid, then online, and then again to a regular school. So the shift which, which took place in last two and a half years has been quite, quite, quite stressful for teachers. While the schools took a lot of effort, to empower them with the trainings, whatever that was required, whatever support was required. And you will hear from the three panelists today, what kind of initiatives, what kind of thought processes have been actually been done. It was a little disturbing also, it was a little disturbing also that across the world, across the world, people are talking about learning loss. Everybody is talking about learning loss, learning loss, learning loss. But how many people are actually bothered about the person who is bridging this learning loss? How many people have actually gone and spoken to that particular teacher who has been shuffling between these roles, these avatars, and then taking care of his or her or his, you know, the home front requirements and the kind of uncertainty which was happening in the community. So today's session is specifically on the experiences which we are seeing across, not specifically to me as individual or those individuals who are part and parcel, but then as a community, how exactly we would like to kind of address that. And in today's panel, I have uh, Mrs. Uh, Arundhati Ji. And uh, Arundhati Ma'am is somebody who is a very, very passionate teacher. Forget about the second role, secretary and correspondent is the second part of it. I have always seen her as a passionate teacher, a teacher uh, who, who wanted to make a difference, who started small, today created an identity for her own school and for the community which is around. That's something very, very important. Today, I have seen, if, if, if you're crossing that particular road in, um, uh, uh, in front of her school at morning, you'll see her standing 
um, waiting to uh, receive the kids, talking to the parents, taking care of going beyond the compound role and taking care of that particular busier store. And that's the way I think what I have seen. Not only a person who has kind of looked at the teacher, teacher's uh, you know, welfare part of it, students' welfare, and uh, on a lighter joke, somebody said, okay, how do you know uh, Arundhati ma'am? I said, I know her very well, but I, 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 I will not be able to get a seat in her school. Okay, that's something which, which is, so that level of transparency and that level of, you know, uh, process orientation is something which you know. Namaste, ma'am, and welcome to today's discussion. I have uh, Mrs. Hamsupriya. Again, I know her as more as a psychology student and somebody who's, again, a very passionate teacher, works quite a deep uh, with the teachers. And uh, she, she, she plays multiple avatars. She plays multiple avatars also. Because she's part of the management. She's also a teacher. And then she's a psych psychologist. And then she is also the academic director now. So in multiple avatars, she has kind of worked quite a lot. She's again a psychology student, more than education, I would say a psychology student. She's got trained herself with Dr. Ima Gonzalez, Gonzalez where she actually did, you know, uh, went the complete uh, training through her. So um, for, thank you, uh, Hamsa ma'am, for uh, joining uh, for today's conversation. And uh, let's hope that together, together we will be able to kind of uh, make a difference to the community. I have Dr. Kennedy, again, uh, uh, um, somebody whom I have uh, always seen, somebody whom I have always seen as a person, uh, whenever it comes to education, I can see that um, his verbal, more than verbal, I see not a lot of energy driving through his non-verbal part of it. Somebody who is a PhD in education, somebody, I have seen him as a geography teacher, um, then moved him, uh, you know, moved with him to, you know, Christ. And then today, I, you know, when it comes to academics, I think he's somebody who contributes quite a lot. Now, let me open the panel asking uh, to start from somebody who, uh, who is kind of, you know, regularly working with teachers per se as such. Do, did we actually see some changes in teachers once they came back to school? post covid if so what are some of the th things that was reflected during this particular time and i would like the panel to open up and then you can kind of decide whoever would like to kind of take it up who would like to speak first yeah i'll send the lamb yeah, please go please go yeah first uh, let me wish everybody good evening good evening. yeah i'm arundhati and i'm as central said i'm a 40 years old teacher that is my prof i'm in this profession past 40 years uh, so, though I am a secretary come correspondent, owns a school, but I never play that role. It's a secondary role for me. The first role is the most important role. I am a teacher and I'll remain teacher always as long as I am in this career. So, first, this COVID, I mean, the came as a rude shock to me because past 38 years, like we were with the children from morning to evening, like almost 8 to 10 us so suddenly because of the lockdown you know it was it came as a root shock no children the buildings were empty and especially for me because I live in the school campus 24 into 7 and 365 days so the campus has become very calm and quiet without children one day two days one week passed but after that you know, like, you know some kind of a depression set into my mind itself because from morning to evening, I have about 18 children, 1800 children and 150 staff. So you keep talking to them. So the communication has become zero. Naturally, a person who is busy with communication for eight hours, suddenly you have become dumb. See, Correct. if you speak in this language, you are muted. Correct. <laughs> so, you know, that was the first challenge as a teacher I faced, you know, because no social, emotional learning, totally everything was stopped. People are talking about the learning loss, but I was more worried about the social and emotional. You know, that support wasn't there at all. So later, the second shock, the shift in the technology, because we were totally illiterate when it comes to the technology, because I belong to that old school where still I strongly do my work, 101% only with the pen and paper. So no electronic gadgets, we never used them or we were in touch with all those. 
though the world has advanced, I had been to 32 countries and I've seen how the technology was utilized. But somehow, but I was very comfortable with only pen and paper. So I never expected in my life a day would come at the age of 60 years, I should switch on to the iPads, you know, internet. I have to learn the language of communication in the technology. It was a big challenge. So this was the second. And third, at that particular during time, how to reach out to all the teachers because we were never prepared with the gadgets or anything. So how to provide the gadgets and how to get the teachers trained. Then fourth, after doing all this, whether we'll be able to satisfy the parents and the children because okay. it was like vacuum. We never knew how we are going to do all that. So these were the things which was as Sentil said, I was never burnt as a teacher, but you know, that was the burning started slowly in me. So yeah. I had to first get trained, then I have to look for the resources, get connected. It took me nearly 20 days for me. And then I understood all the implications, positives and negatives. And then I had to get connected to the teachers, call them. You know, it was a roller coaster ride for all of us. So particularly, ma'am, when teachers came back after the COVID times, this was one phase that all of us went through. Yes. When teachers came back, what was the first thing that you noticed in the teachers per se? Yeah, they were extremely happy to see each other. They were so happy to see their physically the school back. Because, you know, we have allowed the teachers only to come back first. The moment the vaccination drive took place, I first thing I've done is, I've called all my teachers and their families, everybody, and we got it vaccinated. Good. So that okay. vaccination gave them the confidence that, yes, we can. So 100% vaccinated, we got it, including the non-teaching stuff. And I also felt that if I get it done for my teachers, there is every possibility the family members may point out it because I'm responsible for their family. If they come to the school, when they go back, they should not blame my teacher saying that it's you, you got it from the school. So I thought... We engaged even the family also we called and we got it and vaccinated at school. Family, everyone. So first thing we have addressed this. Correct. So Good. the teachers, they came with a lot of confidence to the school and they were very, very happy to see the school. Like, you know, back to the school physically. And mm. of course, by the time they came, the studios were ready at school. Class rooms mm. have become the studios. The new okay. name was given. <laughs> so it was studio one, two, three, not classroom. It's studio one. one, two, three. It was studio 12 studios, like every class one studio. So, you know, and the teachers were very curious, like how to go about with this through studios and all that. You know, they were very, very happy because after a very long time, they saw each other, they could share and all that. Yeah, Good. this was my experience. I don't know about others. but sure, sure, sure. Hamza, ma'am. Uh, you 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 come from a, a, a city of temples, Madurai. In Madurai, what kind of because this is from Hyderabad, whatever we heard so far. In a place like Madurai, what kind of scenarios did you observe during COVID or post COVID, particularly with teachers, students? Uh, you know, I, I would like to live them. Sufficient talk has happened. So, what what about the uh, teachers per se? Ma'am, you have to unmute. Yeah. Outside, Dr. Sandal Kumar, I want to thank you very much for having me uh, in your program. I consider it as a privilege to join your voice because your platform, as you said, is reaching um, across the country and also outside the country. So now you are the voice on behalf of so many teachers in our country and across our country. So I, I feel it is a great privilege to be part of your program. Talking about the well-being of teachers and also, you know, it's whatever you're doing is a great service to the community. So I want to appreciate you for that. Um, the most important thing you asked me, what happened to teachers during COVID? And uh, after COVID. <laughs> yeah, during COVID. So one thing is um, it, it had a divided, uh, uh, um, divided um, um, uh, kind of um, an experience with teachers. But initially, it happened in the month of March. By March 28th, we, I think in Madurai, we closed down schools by March 28th. If I remember correctly, 23rd to 28th somewhere, 
three Correct. years. By then, we had um, uh, we had started a school for the 10th standard, 12th standard students, so upcoming 10th and upcoming 12th. Usually, that's what happens in the month of April. We start the new academic year. So initially, we spent a lot of time in uh, preparing the technology to take them on board. And since teachers themselves were very excited uh, about the technology, uh, so each one was talking. That's the first time I've heard of Zoom. I've heard of many names like that. But <laughs> since the age group of teachers was, uh, you know, they come from an um, age that can uh, explore, you know, they got excited about exploring technology and bringing it into the classroom. But as we were progressing with the Zoom, we face the most important challenge, which I can openly share here. Some of the students misbehaving during the session because they felt that while the class was going on, they can play some music because for them, they wanted to see the reaction of all of them on the screen, you know, like <laughs> finding out who's playing the music. So really? it's kind of small, small fun that they were trying to do, which we started receiving mails from parents stating that the teacher is teaching so uh, uh, teacher is teaching very well teacher is very serious about teaching i'm sitting in the class now then we realize that the teacher when teaching online is not just teaching to the child but also to the auntie uncle all the mates family, members. The family uh, members family the hall room is uh, <laughs> when the class is going on the hall room is got like audience you know like how you go to cinema theater and sit so everybody is seated in the family Correct. so then we realized that uh, this is we are spending a lot of energy in trying to um, kind of uh, regulate students in the online uh, class then we moved on to captured classroom from uh, there we kind of used uh, the zoom um, uh, the google uh, conferencing platform only for kind of discussions and uh, we moved into sending uh, the sessions the learning sessions uh, first itself were delivered to the students they have to sit for the class after which they must come into the class to only discuss and uh, you know it was discussion class so only when the teacher is teaching they are not interested in listening to the class but when you are asked to discuss when you are asked to interact when you are asked to express uh, uh, yourself then i felt that um, uh, students like doing all that you know? so that way we managed uh, during the april and may month and by june we were ready with our school app so internally, we developed an app that can satisfy all the needs of uh, the students. So that was well appreciated by our parents. And uh, we were able to kind of deliver. Uh, for us, we took up the motto, we we'll teach less. Teach okay. very, very less, very less, as less as possible in a day. And it was only for 40 minutes. And so we thought very less and we spent more time on having a lot of reflective time. But learning loss definitely is there. It is after getting them back to school. We are looking at the learning gaps because when we conduct these online tests, children all secure very good marks. But when they <laughs> came back to school and sat for the test, we were super surprised that they were able to score uh, in digit. Um, I mean, children who secured 80, 400 and all, we're securing only digit marks. So then we stopped conducting all the assessments and we started working on what we have to do for students. But teachers, uh, even when Madurai had this lockdown lifted, that they said like you can go, but for children, schools were not open, but uh, uh, you can work from this time to this time with uh, some proper social distancing and all that. We found that many of our teachers want to come back to school. Okay. They wanted to come back to school because I started uh, missing most of them. Why do you want to come back to school? Because see, at home, the family demands them to have, uh, demands them to make a fresh food for every meal. Okay, so for breakfast, okay. for lunch, <laughs> for everything. Okay. So kind of looking after the online teaching as well as feeding your family and looking after the domestic work was kind of, you know, like the teacher was really having a tough time. Some of our teachers did have um, challenging times at home. So school work is school work. Uh, your domestic work is domestic. They were not able to balance both at home. So they had that kind of a challenge. So when the when the madam, as madam said, studios were open after the vaccination, we also had our teachers coming happily to school because those days we did not have the regular buses flying also. So they have to find the private transports to come to school, but they still were happy to come to school. Yes. So that means there was a lot of happiness and they wanted to kind of come back to campus to meet their colleagues, uh, understand each other. So that means that social engagement or the social need of there was getting kind of uh, fulfilled uh, very, very clearly. Yes, Dr. Kennedy, you have been uh, uh, somebody who has been observing uh, the whole uh, uh, education sector from outside and then 
uh, intervening as and when required. So your first quick comments on what did you observe in teachers and what kind of scenarios were existing? Uh, thank you, Dr. Sandil and all the panel members and all those who are part of this uh, particular session. I think, uh, first of all, uh, uh, let me uh, uh, put across uh, my own experience. Uh, you know, when the COVID came, uh, it was a real shock. And, uh, and in fact, uh, to the total education system and to the community, because it caught us totally unawares. And, uh, you know, we had to rethink our whole strategy as to how we would drive uh, such an important, uh, uh, you know, component of the nation building process because uh, schools and the schools were the future of the country. And uh, in fact, what was running in my own mind was what will, the, uh, what will the managements do when they really didn't have a strategy in place because all humankind, mankind was, you know, uh, hit by the COVID. Uh, so it was, I mean, on one end, uh, the, um, uh, the individuals, the families were caught uh, between uh, survival of life. And on the other hand, also looking at, uh, uh, you know, how we get the education system going. And both of them, interestingly, were important. So there were a lot of decisions to be made. Uh, but nevertheless, I think, uh, 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 I mean, uh, today's discussion is on the uh, post-COVID uh, situation and the burnout of teachers. But let me tell you, we are not out of the pandemic yet. And uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> we, we, we should have talked about, um, uh, did people, uh, have something, you know, a concept called a burnout during COVID itself and uh, burnout uh, getting only after the post COVID. Uh, so therefore, you know, it's a very relevant, important topic to be discussed. Um, let me uh, recollect and tell you in 2007, when I was in a fellowship in the, in the uh, Philippines, uh, I went through this concepts of, uh, uh, you know, online teaching, synchronous, asynchronous, and hybrid. And in fact, uh, thank God I got certified. And uh, the system in, uh, in Dalasal Manila University was that if anybody wants to teach, they had to compulsorily go through uh, this particular course. Otherwise, he cannot do a hybrid class. So what is an hybrid class? 50% uh, online and 50% face-to-face. Uh, but interestingly, when I came back, you know, this was almost, uh, I don't know whether it was outdated or an idea which will never materialize. So 2019, we were hit by the pandemic, 12 years later, almost a decade. And you know what, uh, even to a person who was trained in 2007, my certificate was valid because we were asked to do uh, some kind of a course in online to get the nuances of, uh, you know, this whole virtual environment. And, uh, and you can imagine uh, the stress that people have been going through. And as uh, Dr. Uh, Madam Arundhati already mentioned, it was an old, uh, a whole different world. And uh, uh, for example, uh, though I went through a, a very systematic uh, training on asynchronous and synchronous and hybrid, uh, you know, the mind was strong, the concept was fresh, but you know, what weakened me was the fingers. I couldn't run the fingers. And you know, today we talk about uh, uh, platforms, we talk about uh, uh, different apps and uh, whatnot, Kahoot, and uh, uh, you look at uh, WebEx, and then you look at uh, um, what do you call uh, several other platforms. So, I mean, all these things were uh, there uh, in the uh, making for different purposes, but look at how it came and rescued education. And uh, you believe it or not, uh, for me to, I was not satisfied with that training because I was just not able to get onto the system and work because the technology was for an entirely different uh, set of people. It was for the younger people. And so they were able to acclimatize. They were able to be, you know, so their stress levels were low. In fact, my stress levels were very high. And in fact, uh, we were already uh, feeling that we were already burnt out uh, just the moment that COVID was uh, hitting us. All right. So therefore, 2019, uh, in fact, I did a course from the Hyderabad University on online and uh, asynchronous and, uh, and, you know, the kind of sea changes that happened, it gave a lot of confidence. Okay, so that is, uh, that is something very important. Now, what happened to teacher when they, uh, teachers when they came back uh, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the classrooms, to the face-to-face -face situation? I think uh, a couple of interesting points. First thing is that it is the confidence, right? Now, confidence was of two kinds. Uh, one of the confidence was that uh, people were vaccinated 
and therefore you know uh, by human natural human tendency they want to get out of these uh, four walls of their homes they want to be out in the open okay uh, i'm not talking about people even who were you know um, uh, uh, running to run during the time of uh, the covid times and the police had to run up, run after them to push them back in but then uh, the teachers were waiting to the teachers were waiting to get back to the classroom because i would always challenge and say that technology is not the solution to teaching right though i am I, i don't catch me because i'm not the old generation teacher but even in the modern today i can operate any system uh, i can uh, go into any platform and uh, i can uh, impact a couple of my students even before the covid could hit have submitted thesis on uh, online uh, uh, and distributed education systems well but nobody can replace a class uh, i mean a classroom and a face to face we are not here to create human robots in fact uh, when you went right now in this particular environment uh, what is happening is that we are all going online and um, you know what i'm what i'm uh, what I'm, it's a totally artificial world okay the technocrats and technologists may say that artificial intelligence and things like that but uh, what is the human factor see that is what is missing see teaching is all about emotions teaching is about all about relationship teaching is about socialization and you know as teachers we need to look at that relationship where the children are also uh, uh, what you call as uh, looking forward to that i, I mean uh, uh, thanks to dr sindler talked about learning loss now what is the learning loss learning loss is a very big concept it is not only we are talking about uh, intellectual development we are talking about simple aspects of how children want to see the other human being in a natural setting because we are no more machines we are no more uh, technology we are human beings and that's the great thing that happened in the post uh, a uh, pandemic period when people came back to the classroom so that's my view uh, op- as a yeah. opening remark to this particular thank, thank you dr right. kennedy for uh, giving that kind of level of inputs because when you try to look at all the researches which have been done like in spain university of basque country in spain they actually talk they did a research uh, specifically on to measure the symptomology shown by the teaching staff since the you know the schools were closed and the results revealed very interesting points it said the high percentage of teachers showed anxiety depression and stress symptoms it further says that and variables such as gender age job stability and the level of education at which they teach and the parental status also influence this particular symptomology similar research was done in china in three cities at the same time three cities it was done and what they assessed was very very interesting was the prevalence of anxiety among the teachers and found that it was around 13.67% with women being more anxious than men and the older one being more symptomatic the third research which was done in arab an arab study basically talks very clearly says that the crisis has caused the teachers to suffer problems that are often related to the pandemic situation such as anxiety depression domestic violence very interesting this came up domestic violence and divorce all of which restrict their ability to teach properly now if you try to look at the researches with whatever happened across and the kind of things which we are hearing from schools because when we talk to teachers when i'm traveling across the country and talking to teachers i get very very different perspective where people are saying very specifically the child gives the attendance in the classroom and goes around the classroom to circle and comes and sits in his chair now when this discussion happened between the parent and the teacher saying that why the kid was performing like that the parent said during the online classes that means for last two years the kid was giving attendance with the camera on and then he used to switch off the camera and take two circles of the house you know he used to run around the house and come and sit down so this was one kind of challenge the second kind of challenge which was very very visible for teachers was keeping the feet on the table and wanting to attend the class now that is another kind of challenge the third kind of challenge which was very very visible in many schools was every 20 minutes they wanted a snack break every 20 minutes they wanted to go and use washroom now 
these were the kind of challenges which were kind of coming in and everybody talked about the student but let's talk about the teacher now this kind of varied environment which the teacher is handling how many of us actually kind of spent the time energy continuous professional development for teachers to handle such a kind of a situation except in few schools i don't say all schools few schools there were few initiatives which were taken and let's try to hear from one by one from panelists what kind of initiatives they have taken or mm -hmm. what they have kind of observed what was happening around yes arundhati ma'am you can start yeah the shift of the technology had a greater impact on the teachers because uh, in 100 like if in at our school like there are about 100 teachers almost 20 were not certain about the use of the technology they were worried you know they started like you know can we do you know being a 22 years old teacher still they had doubt in themselves whether we are will be able to because still then they are very popular teachers like you know in the physical school when the but they said can we deliver ma'am online the same i don't think so you know this 20% teachers had this doubting themselves you know though they were very good teachers they were saying like technology we don't know how to use we don't know how far we can. and the second one was all these days the teaching was restricted only to the students but now the whole family as she said everybody <laughs> was listening to that was the greatest challenge that Extended was the classroom. greatest tension that created in the teachers because adults were in the class not no more students so the teacher has to be very very cautious not only the body language the words you know the teaching everything so that's the second reason they stressed out a lot and third in most of the schools everybody started using the zoom there was no security and all that so too many interruptions and things were going bad behind and the children were having an access to criticize the teachers parents were having access to criticize the teacher post the comments in the you know whatsapp group class group all that so these were the three major things which i have noticed that teachers were you know literally very upset with this so it took some time for them but whereas when it comes to our school what i did is before i started the sessions i first had a video chat with all my parents we called for a meeting and then we i told the parents i honestly told them see none of us are computer literates or you know technology literates we are totally we are trying our level best to reach to the students with whatever possibilities we have so if you have any objections if you have any problems feel free please come and tell us so we make mistakes and we learn from our mistakes so you should allow us so because we are also human beings so i made it first i addressed the parents so that you know teachers become very confident ma'am told the teachers second i told them please don't worry about the security we have not gone with the zoom or any such we have outsourced we have given it to the radio techno i mean radio technology we have engaged the services and literally they took 15 days for every teacher to train when they felt Where they were all confident, though it is a little bit late. I address the parents like once we are confident, we'll be starting the online classes. So they have handholded the teachers and they have trained very well the teachers. So that gave lot of confidence to the teachers. And then we start that the second one we have you know the teachers became confident again. And the third content delivery because. the regular classes like you know we have 240 working days because of you know the government has put a restriction that you should not exceed your classes more than these many hours it should be it is harmful for the children so that was the teachers were very like how we can complete the content and how we can prepare the children for the board examinations because board conducted the examination in spite of all this and suddenly there was a shift from subjective to the objective type that was a big challenge for the teachers. multiple choice questions multiple the choice questions so again we had to engage the services to, to give confidence to the teachers immediately we switched on to the educational initiatives and we requested mm -hmm. them you know alumni association of ahmedabad i said you we you have to train our teachers in this because we are not experts in all this and you know teachers don't feel comfortable to ask the superiors but if you engage the service of the trainers then 
definitely they feel more confident and they feel more you know comfortable to ask them and get trained so this is how we try to content we have tried and first we all sat we had a meeting and we have decided that which are the lessons which are having important concepts we said we counted the number of working days i said the teachers let us not include all lessons for the pen and paper test we will choose the lessons minimum with the important concepts so we have reduced the syllabus and when sure. i address the parents i have told them this like if there were about 22 lessons we have chosen only 14 lessons for the pen and paper we said we'll focus only on this so like that we have placed the content technology and you know training all three we have done simultaneously so the teachers were very confident to do that but of course, of course it involves it incurs you also bit. said made lot of sense ma'am because i think it's very important what you said the communication to the parents was very very important very very important many many times you know if you don't communicate to the parents the parents yes. still think the old methods and i think you made it very very clear is uh, something and uh, santil i made it a point that like how we used to have regular ptms like that every one month i used to have a meeting with all my parents like these are the timings i'm thinking to have for the children what do you say if you say yes for opinion poll we used to take and then we used to follow most of the time like which age group children want morning classes which age group parents prefer afternoon classes so it was more or less you know hand in hand we worked with the parents you know so that's how we could run smoothly whether it is offline or whether it is online like you know. online good yeah equally good. we have involved the parents in other thing so that reduces the stress in the teachers correct so that means empowerment of teacher is key yes. with the communication to the parents periodic i think that's a route which you took hum sir ma'am what's what about you sir as uh, madam said uh, teachers uh, they always they very conscious about what they talking what they teaching on online class we started developing script they prepare the script for the lesson that they are going to teach and this script we carefully went through made sure that uh, uh, for that day's class because this, at the back end it involves a lot of work yes we did a lot of work but for teachers we made it very easy for them to only take that script to the class so in that itself we had everything planned went to break went to in, may allow the students to interact because we have to give a lot of time uh, uh, space for students uh, to express themselves on what little we are teaching them so one is we prepared script number two is as uh, we have to keep the communication uh, uh, going back and forth between the school and the parent we started um, uh, we started um, a call center a oh, call center yeah okay. we started uh, we bought a kind of uh, 20 phone uh, phones you know where the first the bill, uh, i don't know how it works but 20 of our teachers offered themselves to work on, uh, in the call center so at the back end we had a call center which was constantly uh, kind of uh, um, receiving calls from parents and if supposing they say the link is not happening because if they disturb the teacher while the teacher is teaching um, that kind of causes a lot of disruption to the class so we kept a call center where the calls will be received and immediately there will be two uh, actually every class was having uh, two teacher at a time so one teacher was doing the delivery another teacher was uh, monitoring um, all the uh, letting the students in or showcasing the ppt all that so that teacher will receive these calls and she will be managing the situation so that way uh, the communication the call center was a very big help these two years you know now we have withdrawn the call center but uh, we have a very small number of uh, do, you, do, do you think do you think the call centers are now required to handle the psychological challenges which the teachers and the no, but uh, regular queries that come to a school must be answered because today's parents want a lot of answers from the school and sometimes you know even when uh, the way parents represent about uh, a particular child for instance i'm a, i'm a teacher in fourth standard teaching english and uh, there is a parent who visits the school on a weekly basis or they come quite often to the class and they give me a lot of uh, uh, inputs about the child what happens is when i go to class and when i am in the class with the child whatever words the parent has given to me about the child that comes to me so sometimes i feel the teacher parent is not in the classroom but i feel the parent is also in the classroom 
that kind of a feeling i get because to that extent today's parents uh, they uh, want to know what's happening in the lives of their children in the classroom because today parents understand that education can bring a very big change uh, to the lives of the children and also if they come to know of the learning gaps uh, then and there they can also contribute in remediating the child and catching up uh, you know with the uh, academics as quickly as possible so one is call center second one is we did the scripting of everyday class so everyday script has to be approved at two levels okay? okay only when it is approved they can go in for the class the captured lessons i i sat till uh, how much hour time i could and uh, approved the lessons only then 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 it can go for the teaching itself because we must be very conscious about the content that is going into the online session because parents as i said parents you teach in the by everybody sitting and listening to the lessons so we were very careful about it about that is the second thing and third thing is during this april and may month that during that those two months we gave innumerable trainings to our teachers online and got the rest of the school prepared uh, to face the online teaching so somewhere second week of june we went off and uh, we kept teaching like that but once they returned to school we found out the learning gaps from then on we stopped testing them and we only spend time in groups like we put them according to their levels of learning because it was all lot of diagnostic tests that we uh, ran with the students we identified the learning levels and put into groups and we started working on that so you Good. still not sure with the break now in between how much is lost and when they come back in june <laughs> so still 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 i think we we may need to kind yeah, of go back and work yeah. Yeah. yes because the loss whatever has happened for last two years cannot be repaired in two weeks or two months that's my personal belief too yes dr kennedy what's your views you 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 might you have been kind of observing things what schools have been trying to do and play around with absolutely i would like to take a different perspective i think uh, uh, if we have uh, the best teachers uh, the best teachers are the ones who have come out of the covid situation and the teachers who are in the post covid period not because they have been vaccinated because they have been simply being tested because the the covid situation threw a lot of challenges to the to the teachers especially you know the teachers were getting exposed as uh, uh, uh madam arundhati mentioned there was a lot of insecurity and you know uh, and in fact uh, uh, the management and uh, several teachers themselves we trying to get a kind of a preparedness uh, you know getting used to technology and uh, at the same time you know there was so much of etiquettes that they had to learn how to face a camera how to condense a, in fact uh, a huge content into a shorter time where the students would be exposed to screen time and in fact uh, uh, i mean everybody was bothered about the uh, stress uh, that we were building up on the students but nobody thought about the teacher especially the uh, the teacher was a lady at home who had to manage the home sometime uh, people who were uh, sick at home and uh, what is that and in fact in, in the midst of all these things as I, that's why i said uh, burnout i mean uh, i mean if there was a scream of burnout about happening it already happened during the time of the uh, at the height of covid, the COVID itself and uh, it's yeah. only uh, in fact interestingly you will find when people came back to the uh, normal situation there's a stream of resignations you can i mean that's the data which shows and in fact people are not able to readjust to this entirely uh, new uh, situation but then something was running into my mind in fact when we talked about curriculum we talked about uh, syllabus and things like that it's all that we were looking at certain competencies and certain abilities that we were able to uh, we were supposed to meet and develop in the students but then uh, the, the the post i mean the covid and the post covid uh, situation has taught us something very interesting now we if we could uh, i mean uh, people are talking about the learning loss and things like that now if at all if you're looking at certain abilities to uh, be built into the students why then you should have a long uh, syllabus a long curriculum uh, what is the quick way what is the fast track in trying to build those uh, uh, what do you call abilities and the outcomes that we are targeting so therefore um, i mean uh, the system has to change uh, uh you know for the next uh, couple of years and the students have learned a uh, lost this learning loss how you make up those uh, uh, outcomes which they were not able to achieve so there should be a kind of a parallel we need to i mean uh, uh, i mean students who have gone into uh, what you call as uh, grade from grade 2 to grade 3 but then they should 
be a very clear analysis at grade two what they were supposed to have achieved and that they should have made good uh, when they are right now in the uh, in the face to face classroom so therefore um, uh, i mean uh, what i'm trying to say is that uh, the institutions were preparing were not prepared for a, 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 a this kind of a scenario and uh, you know a lot of things happened uh, institutions went on uh, training teachers uh, you know the, the basics of technology in the basics of uh, entirely as uh, madam mentioned from subject to objective the examination systems uh, uh, have to be redesigned and uh, therefore at the end even uh, look at uh, important uh, disciplines like uh, uh, medical sciences and engineers and in fact uh, areas like civil engineers they all went online and therefore we had built civil engineers we have built doctors uh, a whole generation of uh, uh, professionals okay right and therefore uh, you know uh, 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 many institutions you know learned by experience and you know as i said uh, uh, the, the human spirit uh, is very great and uh, you know the experience and the challenges that the situation threw up made them to learn many new things there were a lot of innovations there was a lot of creativity and that urge for administrators administrators to strategize the governance to strategize the teachers to strategize and the learners also to strategize all these things happen and most of the uh, institute, institutional level trainings and uh, the uh, the greatest uh, 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 you know uh, 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 initiative that happened in many institutions was adaptability to change and you tell me uh, which situation even in a normal condition has not taught us to adapt to change because change is happening very fast so sure. uh, this is the kind of uh, initiative that the institutions were involved you know uh, you know trying to uh, make readjustments so sure. that's my so point kennedy, of view yeah thank you thank you kennedy i think there are a couple of questions which have come in one is that uh, the students are not ready to write second is support from the higher authorities for teachers play a very important role in daily transactions of the school so i think the role of the management is again very is been asked and there's a compliment kennedy very true kennedy sir a lot of physical and mental stress managing home and school was not easy for two teachers during the covid time so i think that's a very important message which are coming now let's just uh, uh, understand that they, these things are there but for me when i try to look at it there are only three things which are explicitly coming in the social needs of the teachers i don't know where they are where it went second was the academic needs of the teachers where exactly whatever they needed the support like arundhati ma'am said that we train uh, hamsa ma'am said we trained kennedy said that we train i think this training the investment on the training is again academics is something very very important the third important thing was something which is the emotional aspect of the teacher now where exactly who is fulfilling this particular bridging this particular gap suppose yeah. if i ask a question i set up one simple uh, statement saying that can each one of us share what are the three things that which we should do what are the three things we should do uh, to ensure that the burnout is not happening among the teachers and even if it has happened how do you we bridge it so what could be the three initiatives which we can take yes uh, arundhati ma'am you can start yeah the, this is the very best question you have asked because the first and foremost important thing was like you know during the covid time the hospital bills were very high the per teachers were worried like if something goes wrong if we go to the hospital we have to spend lakhs of rupees you know how the bills were made in the hospitals so that was the biggest challenge for the teachers so the first initiative what i have taken from the management side is that the moment the covid the broke out we have got all the teachers lic i mean health insurance done for rupees 5 i mean almost 5 lakhs rupees for each individual that gives lot of emotional and you know that support to the teachers so the first step i have taken was this i ensured that you are all safe don't worry at any time anything goes wrong you know this will take care of your health you know that was the biggest support a management could give to the teachers so this was the first initiative i have taken yes ma'am what is the second and third quickly you would recommend that should happen in schools yeah second second one second for this is the first one and second one we, i have taken is i have gifted all teachers watches and fixed okay. gave a challenge that everybody has to we kept we have announced a challenge that everybody has to walk okay two months so challenge something, 
so it, it to the build second up their one physical is, health. Oh, okay, yeah. so it is to just to monitor their BMI index per se as such. Yes, health to men because health. they okay. are not so used health. to the walking and all. They were not taking care of their physical well-being, teachers. So yes. second, I have looked into that and I gifted them all watches and I said, and we have posted in our teacher's notice board that whoever does these many steps, this is the gift they will get. This is the gift they will get. And you don't believe everybody started walking in the school. No, I observed when I did the training program on 2nd October at your place. After yeah. the lunch, the teachers are walking in the auditorium up and down just to yeah. ensure that they are clocking. So I think yeah. it's, it's it's very, very important. that so We should look into their physical health also. That was the Good. second one I have taken care of. That second one is that. I have not looked at the students, where, what they teach, what they do. You know, I was only looking after, I mean, I was more concerned about the welfare of the teachers. Correct. Like, and the Third one, we have, I told the teachers, they said like, we are not able to complete the syllabus and you have fixed only 40 minutes time for the period. I said, whatever you can teach, please do that. I don't want you to go beyond this. So our classes for every class, right from LKG to class 10, I've made it a matter. It's LKG to fifth class. It's only one and a half hour. And the other classes, it was only two hours. That's all. I right. told the parents also like, you know, this is, we don't work beyond this and we don't want to just for I watch sake, we don't want to teach. Whatever we teach, it has to go in. And the rest of the time, we used to call up the children, talk to the parents, individual training we used to do. And we used to talk to the parents. We used to ask them to video call the teachers used to do easy in the place. I used to do checks also during this time, whether the child was present in the class or not. I used to call up the parent and then I used to tell, give the phone. And then I, without disturbing, I used to ask, just know what your teacher was teaching, tell me what was that question. <laughs> so monitoring actually helps. Monitoring, so I love yeah, the three, oh, You know, all the yeah. three idea. Uh, one, I think, which came out very, very clear is health insurance for all your yeah, staff. Three. So that Second, gave a lot of confidence. Monitor. Yes. Second yes. is to give a monitoring tool like a watch, which can monitor their health particularly their BMI index and recognizing them for clocking yeah. the whole And also step. physical fitness is very important. Physical fitness, yes. correct. Okay. The third important thing which also came out very explicitly is that uh, to make, my, to not to be rigid, rigid in terms of the syllabus, the portions and the content. And timing. I think that came out very well. Yeah. Timing and other Very things. flexible. So very flexible it was. Yes. Thank you very much. Hamsa ma'am, next to you. So hats off to Arundhati ma'am on the health insurance policy because uh, for us to do such a big uh, thing would be a big task. But anyway, we were uh, we ensured that uh, we give them the full uh, uh, salary during the COVID times. That is the best we did. And we do have a kind of an understanding with a particular hospital in Madurai all along, which will uh, treat uh, that it is uh, signed with the hospital that it teaches from our school they take treatment there because since we also have a residential school uh, they already support us in that treatment and there uh, we have the privilege of getting the bills you know with this many percentage so that kind of a support we did and of course uh, we when teachers came in we uh, every day we had a kind of physical fitness uh, for them um, and uh, we ensured that we played ball so the fields and all were like uh, without children uh, the games did not happen so instead of uh, children playing uh, teachers were kind of you know they were encouraged to play Ch teachers in fact uh, were uh, looking forward to this play time in the school so and also you know spiritually uh, we had the sessions for teachers to empower them in their mind so these are the few things that we did during uh, the covid uh, time that teachers came to school very good thank you thank you um, kennedy what should what is the need that is supposed to be done dr kennedy your views yeah, I think uh, you're able to hear me, Dr. Sindhil. Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, yeah. I think uh, there are three things uh, that uh, basically uh, what uh, uh, institutions have been doing. Uh, one thing is that uh, uh, surprisingly, we found uh, that, you know, most teachers were challenged and uh, to their surprise, you know, the institutions had 200% uh, concern about that. And therefore, they came forward with a huge support. So the first uh, initiative is that showing concern was very important. And uh, the second important thing is that uh, the institutions also uh, talked about how to give emotional support to the teachers as well as to the students. And uh, 
uh, and the second uh, important aspect was uh, on uh, you know getting the physical well-being of uh, the teachers uh, you know the, uh, and there were a lot of initiatives that was uh, you know uh, driven towards to keep uh, teachers fit and uh, even though we were during the uh, lockdowns and during the rolling lockdowns you know keeping fit uh, uh, was very important for teachers so those uh, kind of challenges came up and institutions also supported very well because they gave a lot of time for uh, teachers to balance between work and to keep their physical fitness. Then the most important thing was, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, teachers to uh, work on becoming mindful on, uh, you know, uh, controlling mental exhaustion. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, a lot of support systems were created, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, and uh, encouragement was done how uh, there could be support created among the community uh, among among the learning community, among uh, the colleagues, and uh, to learn from each other, and therefore all these kind of initiatives enable the, the teachers to move on to the normal situation. Now, once they are uh, post the uh, COVID, now the situation is uh, getting people to be their natural uh, in the natural environment. So that is the fastest way to get back into uh, what they are. Uh, supposed to be and uh, and uh, the institutions uh, initiatives on these things are uh, were most welcoming and therefore we are slowly making uh, uh, back to the normal situation so these sure. are some of the things thank you thank you kennedy i think uh, one of the things which i have been trying to talk to other sectors like manufacturing it it sectors trying to understand from them what kind of initiatives because while discussing on this last two, three days, I've been kind of, uh, you know, uh, trying to do research by talking to people and trying to talk to HRs that what exactly is happening. So one of the things which was visible in one particular sector uh, was uh, that people out of 10,000, 4,000 people were asked to come and only 40 people turning out. So now people were not wanting to come back in other sectors is possible. But in school sector, I don't think it's possible. We, we can't even think about it. Okay, it's, it, it's not going to be all that easy because the availability of technology, access to technology is something which has to be kind of looked upon. The second important thing which came out explicitly from the other sectors were at least in manufacturing, people were going to shop floors. People were at least going to the shop floors and coming back. But everybody is kind of, you know, trying to look at it. But somewhere I feel, somewhere I feel, I think what came out from uh, all the three panelists was very important is that first and the foremost thing which came out is that I think we need to create a conducive environment for the teacher to be, uh, you know, uh, comfortable in whatever he or she wants to do in the campus. Now, there can be some guidelines, there can be values and ethos of institutions which can be as can be the framework under which they can have the flexibility of kind of, you know, looking into it. That's one particular thing which has come up. The second particular thing, which is also uh, very important, um, uh, which uh, came out from multiple schools was, can we reduce the workload of the teacher? Let's not do all that what we did three years ago. Let's take a little pause. Let's do a little bit of catching up and then make sure that the workloads are little kind of, you know, balanced. That's very, very important. The third important thing which came out is, I think, personally, I don't believe in reducing of syllabus or chopping of chapters. You can reduce the depth of the concepts, but you should cover the concepts. Like what Arundhati ma'am said, no, let's not get into too much, take deep dive into it, but try to make sure that how exactly this can actually be worked upon. The next important thing which I was also thinking is that I think the continuous professional development which is coming in, which came out in all the three panelists was very, very important is that continuous professional development, invest, 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 as much you invest, that much you reap. And I love that idea, Hamsama, what you said, that uh, the grounds were filled with teachers, not when the students were not around. I think that's something which 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 is which was kind of completely important for teachers also to kind of look at it. I still remember in one particular school, they used to play, the music department took the initiative and the dance department took the initiative that every day evening before they live, they will have a little bit of Jumba being done, uh, you know, uh, exertion of energy being done before they kind of get out of it. So that's something very, very important, which we really need to look at it. Not only this, I think one more very important thing, which I have seen in uh, multiple schools, including Arundhati Ma'am School is, uh, celebrate the teacher. 
celebrate small successes by the teacher celebrate small achievements of the teacher because somewhere that recognition component somewhere that recognition component is missing and people are getting restless because i can tell you uh, you know why i even you know i had to kind of bring this particular session in a emergency mode the simple reason was that in some cases even to do substitution duty in the schools people earlier also substitution has been a challenge for teachers in the workloads but now people don't want to say we can't take up substitution in one particular school people became you know physical with each other and when i came when i came to know from one of the principals i think it was very disturbing that you know some of the good friends just post covid they are not even wanting to accommodate that you know that simple thing that can i take up your workload for some time and then i will get so any new initiative which has been thought about is something which we really need to look at it there are few questions and comments which have come up let me quit quickly you know go through uh, roshni says a healthy mind resides in healthy body a uh, good idea for motivating the teachers to walk i think you should ask your principal to start you know call up arundhati ma'am and find out how she has been able to manage those gifts that's something very important meena reddy comes up with the thing arundhati ma'am always stood for her team whether it's covid or non covid situation i have seen practically all these types of initiatives for the past decade her so me uh, arundhati ma'am one of your parent is writing this particular comment uh, miss meena mm-hmm. reddy is writing this comment for you arvindar kaur writes that physical fitness is very important and depends upon availability of stress and working environment understanding colleagues and authority arvindar i completely agree with you i think that particular thing needs to be built up because that is something which is missing Rama Srinivasan also says that she did a lot of activities to motivate our team and be with them during the virtual school. And she said they she did some fun games and celebration. Uh, she watched their classes, motivated them continuously, and uh, this was just to de-stress them. And I think she says that I heard them and supported by giving them leave whenever they needed. So I think that's something very very important. Kalyani says that very clearly. Uh, tie up with the local hospital is a true exa- amazing situation. I think, uh, Amsa ma'am, that's uh, your example which came in. Roshni again makes a comment saying that me time and play time is good idea for teachers. So I think we really need to kind of look at me time and uh, uh, play time. That's again something very very important. Uh, uh, Arvind Kaur again she comments further and says yes sir to produce efficiency some unnecessary workload to be reduced. Uh, Arvind Kaur I don't know what is what is uh, unnecessary in a school setup but I think you and your principal can take a decision on what exactly needs to be done. But let me ask one quick one 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 word or one one statement question to all the panelists. First question, Arundhati ma'am, what's your message to parents? One statement, just one statement. what is your statement yeah yeah i my message to the parents is education begins at home and ends at home so the parents are the first role models for the children fine thank you hamsa ma'am uh, recently we have been telling to parents in our orientation kindly if you have any problems in the school come to the school sit to the school talk don't discuss about the teacher in front of your child Because I feel uh, that uh, has a greater impact in the child learning in the classroom. Children uh, never uh, listen uh, when you tell them; they only watch you with their eyes, and they will follow that. So I feel that parents must be very cautious about how they treat a school and teacher in front of their child. Very good, Kennedy. What's one ka one fair feedback to the parents? Uh, I think uh, I want to give two words. Uh, I mean. Uh, uh learning and encouraging children is all about motivation and interest and therefore the uh, the parents have to be interested the parents have to be motivated and that's how they can build interest and motivation in children and that and that's going to make uh the learning uh, an entirely uh a different uh, uh world experience for them yes arundhati ma'am one so line that- to say what once one one quick statement and advice or what is your suggestion to principals and manager and i'll go around with uh, hamsa and kennedy too yes quickly yeah if i rest i rust if i rest i rust okay that's one line statement for principals and management hamsa ma'am quickly uh, i feel that um, uh, always instruction comes top down to the teachers you know okay. you, it is yeah. decided somewhere and then it's given to teachers to do this do that but i feel so that the- teachers should be given more voice to express themselves on how to do things 
Okay. So because so that means engaged them. Engaged them. Teachers, engage teachers them. are resigning. We feel teachers are not appreciated enough in the system. They are not recognized. So I, I always use this word: serve and celebrate children in school. Serve and celebrate yourself also. So I think teachers must be given more roles in the system. Sure, Kennedy. I think one of the message uh, to the, the management point. and principals. Yes, one of the biggest uh, leadership lesson is that encourage and be encouraged. Encourage and be encouraged. Okay, Arundhati, ma'am, final word from you for teachers. What what is the message that we should live for teachers? Yeah, there is no substitute for the hard work. There is no substitute to the hard work. Lage raho is the mantra. Okay, fine. Yeah. I appreciate that. Lage raho is something which is very, very important. Yeah, that's Thamsa. true. Thamsa, ma'am, go ahead. Readiness, uh, teacher readiness to step into the classroom. You know, there are uh, uh, that many number of children who are ready to be inspired by the teacher. So teachers must take up their roles very seriously. So teacher readiness is more important. Fine. Good. Kennedy, for the teachers, message for the teachers. A very simple a teachers just be inspired and you continue to inspire okay now let me kind of quickly based on you know um, uh, your discussions let me kind of quickly you know put my thoughts and say that okay fine i think if i have if i have if i have to kind of address teachers i would say that first and the foremost thing is that live school at school don't carry school at home or home to school. We are all human beings, but we should be. I think I, I don't want to mention a company, but there is a, uh, in one particular airline, I saw this, live, you know, in the pilot's uh, cockpit when he's entering, it is very beautiful written. Live all your worries here before you enter the cockpit because there are thousands of lives which are there. So first and the foremost thing is um, live school at school. Second, take things very, very slowly. Build resilience because if you don't build resilience, you will be thrown multiple things and you will never be able to achieve. So that's my second important thing. Third, third important thing is that learn to say no. This is again very, very important because when you know that there is a time is a challenge, other things are challenge. Don't try to add new things on your plate. If you keep on adding new things in the plate, I can tell you, you will never be able to enjoy what is already there on the plate. Then adding something new to the plate, you will never be able to achieve. And then frustration will build in. Like somebody said, somebody sent, you know, when I sent this message about the program, they sent a one-line statement, say that, Sendil, please ask the teachers to go and have dessert. I said, what is the meaning of desert? They said, you put the word stressed in ulta. If you put the word stressed, ulta, then it will become desert. So please ask your teachers to go and have desert. So this came out from one of my friends who is HR. And he said that I think this is something which is very, very important. So the message out to all the teachers out there, there are a lot of things I think people have started, uh, you know, talking about uh, informative session. True, ma'am, if parents respect teachers, only the student will respect. I think that's a very important uh, message. Uh, uh, you know, but it's very important that trust your teachers, the management, please trust your teacher, create conducive environment. I know that all of you, all of us had a lot of challenges with regard to uh, the, uh, the uh, financials, the management of institution when it came to, but one thing we can, we all of us can understand and appreciate that together as a community, I think it's high time. It's high time that please don't have any kind of bias against the teachers because they have taken their bet. They have traveled quite a bit, which is very, very important for them. But please, parents, principals, please try to understand because that's something very, very important. They have done a lot of work. And I'm not talking about all. There are always some set of people who can who are there. So let's not do a complete a blanket comment on all the teachers because there are teachers who are passionate, who withstood the test of time, at least. I'm hearing at least in two schools who are here, at least they have paid the salaries uh, to all the complete salary. Yeah. But there are schools which have not been able to pay. I can empathize with you. And people can, if it was a you know a, a reason that you are not able to collect, even if you're able to collect, 
please go back and you know share something because i loved in one particular school instead of giving money they thought that this situation like kennedy said this situation is going to continue they got laptops instead of giving money they gave laptops to the teacher so that this is something which you were not supposed to get but now you are getting a laptop so please go ahead and start using this with this this particular word let me thank uh, arundhati ma'am uh, mm -hmm. for taking time out uh, at a yeah. very short notice uh, hamsa priya thank you very much uh, for uh, taking time off i think it was uh, very interesting to get the perspectives from madurai hyderabad and dr kennedy who is in and out of the system and who understands uh, appreciates and who has seen uh, different avatars and different challenges so thank you very much and quick one comment from each one of you before i say final bye arundhati ma'am yeah i strongly believe that like you know the overall development of the child parents think that it is like sending a school they have to gain everything but i strongly believe that it's the parent teacher and community all three of us together yeah how was the conversation how was this last one one hour 15 minutes conversation whatever i quick reflection on it yeah it What's was good yeah yeah it was nice it's a good learning experience Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank Hansa you, Sandil. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Dr. Sandil, and other panelists today. Teacher does not come to school to become famous or to become the richest person on earth. Okay, right. not like that. They are passionate about the work, and that that that's the reason that they come to school. And management trusts school teachers very much, but it is also the community, the parents, and the society also must kind of give that kind of respect to teachers, and they must understand teachers. are doing a lot of work and nobody talks about the work that teachers are doing they're contributing so much to the society like how a service uh, like a guard is guarding the uh, the territory of our country and looking after the well-being of us from that point a teacher inside the classroom is doing so much so i think today your topic on burnout on teachers is very apt and more topics on teachers only should be held because we are kind of looking at uh, other areas of development but talking about teacher and getting teachers on board to express themselves is very important so thank you for this opportunity thank you dr kennedy you are mute you are on mute kennedy um to be very candid i think it was very engaging and uh, also uh, an opportunity to share whatever i i had in mind uh, so what uh, my uh, final word is that uh, cherish this great profession of teaching and uh, for the administrators and the leaders i think uh, you have got uh, a greater responsibilities than the ministry of education and the political system so uh, the teachers are the nation builders so uh, uh, covid or post covid it's the teachers who will make a change thank, thank you. you very much panelists and have a great evening thank you to all the participants who have joined and continuously been you know commenting on the facebook uh, page this particular video will be available on on my on our facebook page as well on youtube uh, channel ask tlc dr sandil you can go to that particular channel and then you can look at it one request one question which had come to me very specifically was that can we download such videos please go ahead download it show it to your teachers if you find value it please use it and reach out to all the panelists they are independent if you are if you have a challenge to reach out reach out to me i'll be more than happy they happy to connect with them namaste and thank you very much have a great evening stay safe bye bye thank you